This is such a teacher shirt. I'll just wait until it's quiet. We got this shirt to wear at school during Halloween. So that's why we have a skeleton here. Anyways. Hey guys, my name is Riali, for those who don't know me, and I teach English as a second language and also as a foreign language. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about how to speak English really fast. I've been speaking English for quite some time now, and three years ago, I decided to start teaching English. And last August, I got a job at a school, and I teach um, math, English to Americans. So, at that time, I was trying to hone my skills and one thing that I really wanted to improve is how I speak English as far as speed or pace. So my students complain, they complain a lot that they don't understand when native speakers speak English to them, but they do understand someone who speaks English as their second language uh, better. And that is why you know, it happens at all languages, but the reason why is because a Native American, a native speaker, not only speak fast, but they connect their sounds. And then some sounds, it's kind of hard for us to understand. And also types of words they choose or expressions that they use and we might not be used to or habituated to. But the, the speaking fast part, it was something that I really wanted to develop and start doing. So I wanted to sound like an American and for that I thought that I needed to speak English really fast. So I was speeding up all my words and I would speak really, really fast. Then I started doing speech therapy to lose my accent. And then one thing that she told me is that I was indeed speaking really fast, but I wasn't speaking fast as a native speaker. I was just speeding up my words without putting a lot of emphasis in some syllables and some words within my sentence. What it means is that in English, English is a syllable timed language. Every syllable in a word will have a different time. You are not going to spend the same amount of time to speak both syllables, to say both syllables. Sometimes you're going to emphasize a syllable more than other just by using your volume, your voice volume, or just by prolonging that sound a little bit more, spending more time in that syllable a little bit more. And I forgot to do that. I was just speeding up my words and I wasn't, I wasn't emphasizing any syllable or word. And that made me sound more like a foreigner, someone who speaks English as a second language than, you know, a native speaker. So I've been trying to focus on that. And when I, whenever I hear my students saying that they also want to speak really fast, I feel that we're all focusing on saying the words really, really fast without even noticing that some syllables are more stressed than others. And within a sentence, some words are more stressed than others. Today, we're going to be talking about some rules of linking sounds because it will help you speak English a little faster. But as a native speaker, instead of speaking English really fast as a foreigner, you're going to speak English really fast as a native speaker. So um, I was looking at all the rules. There are five main rules for the linking sounds. So today I think I'm going to be focusing in three or, you know, three sounds out of five. So let's start. The first one that I want to start with is called catenation or catenation, linking words. So here is when you put all the words together in a sense and you combine them, combine the sounds. Instead of speaking them separately, you speak them as one word. So for example, if I say trip over, trip over, you hear clearly that I'm saying two words, right? Trip over. But if I am speaking in a sentence and I, I don't I don't stop to make those two separate sounds trip over, I'm going to say trip over. It's almost like they became one word. So the P from trip connects to the O over. So trip over. And that is the easiest combination when you have a word ending in consonant and the next word starting with a vowel, because all you need to do is to combine those two words. So trip over or hang out, hang out. We don't say hang out, right? We say hang out. And in this one, the G becomes very, very subtle. We don't say hang out. We say hang, hang out. 
And then the word, the, the two words, clean up, clean up. But if I am combining them, I'm going to say clean up, nup, clean up, or pick it up. Pick it up becomes pick it up, pick it up. Or what is it? No one speaks like that, right? We say, what is it? What is it? So as you can see, we are combining the words. We are making the words sound like one. And the easiest combination is when a word ends in consonant and the other one starts with a vowel because then it's, it's just easier to make that sound if I feel like trip over or clean up or pick it up. The next one that I want to talk about, it's called elision. And this one is when you're deleting one sound and be careful with that one because I was deleting, I started deleting some sounds and I started deleting important sounds. And in speech therapy, I had this extra work to adding those sounds again, sounds that I wasn't used to anymore. So sometimes the sounds are similar. So if the first word finishes in a consonant sound and the next one starts with a consonant sound, the first sound will disappear. This is not a fixed rule. It can't change. To these rules, we have many, many exceptions. That is one of the hardest, you know, hardest things with English because you have rules, but then you have many exceptions to that rule. So let's start with the next door. So this word next ends in T and the other one starts in D, door. They don't sound the same, but when you make these sounds in your mouth, they make the same movement. To say next, the tip of your tongue goes up to make the T sound, and to make the D sound, you also go up with your, the tip of your tongue to start with the D, and then you go down. So instead of going up and down, up and down for next door, we just make one sound. We go up, next, next, next door. So we go up for the T and we go down as a D. Next door, next door. Now, dad, dad, take, right? So dad, d, d. So the D again goes up and down and take goes up and down for that T sound. We are going to say dad, take because we're going to go up for the D and we're going to go down for the T. Dad, take. Dad, take. Making the sound slowly is hard. Then you have most common. Most common. This one, we don't have similar sounds and we don't have sounds that we make it in the same place in your mouth, but ends with a consonant sound starts with a consonant sound, we're going to drop the T for the first word. So instead of saying most common, I'm going to say most common, most common, most common word is what? So just be careful with this elision to not delete all sound sounds that you do need to make. The next one, the third and final one that I'm going to talk about is assimilation. Assimilation is when we're going to make and produce a new sound. So whenever a word ends in T or D and the next one starts with a Y, we are going to make this sound cha, cha. So don't cha. Isn't there a song? Don't you want you wanna go na na me? You know that song? Don't you? And so so she says don't cha, don't cha. So don't you, don't cha. The ya yeah is the short for you. And sometimes in informal conversations we say ya yeah instead of you. But you can also say don't cha or don't you. For example, don't you have to work tomorrow? Don't you? Don't you? Don't cha? Don't you? or meet you, I'm going to meet you tomorrow. I'm gonna meet you tomorrow, chew, meet you. Did you, instead of saying, did you work? I can say, did you work? J, j, did you work? Would you, would you, would you, would you, would you? So it becomes you or chew. It's like a D, G sound. Did you, do, do, do. So these are three sounds for you to keep in mind. No, I said four, right? So we're gonna be talking about four or three, three out of five, four out of five. I don't know, my memory is not great. But 
a bonus one here. It's called geminates. It's when we have two wing sounds. So whenever a word ends with a consonant and the next one starts with the same consonant, we are going to say only one consonant. So for example, social life, social ends in L, life starts with an L. So we're going to drop one L and we're going to say social life, social life, or I want to, I want to cook. I'm not going to say I want to cook too many consonant sounds because want ends in T Two starts with a T. We're going to say one T. I want to cook. I want to cook. I want to cook. So I hope this video helped you to speak a little bit better and faster in a way that native speakers would. And let me know down in the comments if you have any questions or anything you would like to add. And don't forget, if you're not a subscriber, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and come back for more videos in the future. Big kisses. Bye bye. I'll see you next.